Hey people, how are you doing? We are live. Welcome to what is episode 192 of the Sports Therapy Association podcast. My name is Matt Phillips, creator of RunCheckLive.com. And as always, this episode is being recorded on a Tuesday at eight o'clock on the Sports Therapy Association YouTube channel and the Sports Therapy Association Facebook page and in the Facebook group as well. So if you are listening to the podcast recording and you like the idea of joining us live then all you need to do is head along to one of those places at eight o'clock on a Tuesday normally on a Tuesday we've got some coming up um, at nine o'clock so do keep an eye out on social media UK underscore STA but that's how you can join us live and be part of the live lounge and ask uh, our guests questions face to face as it was some questions emailed into me matt at the sta.co.uk and or ask uh, answer questions uh, in the live lounge put to people who have chosen to join us live. Um, in this episode of Ask Us Anything, we're going to start a new series. There'll be about four or five of them, hopefully, if it proves popular, where we are going to focus on a particular population of, of a sport. So this episode is Therapy for Runners, um, which, as the title suggests, means the panel are going to be asking questions on working with running clients. Uh, next month will be therapy for team sports on the first Tuesday of the month. And then in future months, we plan to have therapy for swimmers and we're also going to have therapy for cyclists. And if you're interested in another sport, which you think could fill a whole episode, then feel free to email that suggestion to me, matt at the sta.co.uk. Um, so that's as much as I'm going to do now because I'm very keen to get the panel up. We've got a fantastic selection of working therapists who all work with runners in one form or another. Um, if you are in the live lounge and you've decided to join us live, then thank you very much. Um, when you do ask a question, your question will come up onto the screen um, so I can bring it there. If you do find that your identity is hidden, it's just because you haven't clicked on the Facebook group security link, uh, which is basically go to b.live forward slash comments hyphen issue. Um, that should be in the in the notes on the Facebook group if you need it. That just gives Facebook permission to use your logo if you bring a question up. But I'll remind you in case I see any Facebook users come up um, and without their identity. Right then. So no particular order. I shall now go ahead and we will start Ask Us Anything Therapy for Runners with the STA panel. Let's bring them all up. Right, we've got a mass entrance of people now. So you can all just say hi at the same time. Remember, this is a podcast and no one can see you waving. Just, let's just get that out of the way now. Hello. Apart from people who have joined us live, welcome everybody. It's really exciting to see you all here. It's so cool. We've got such a great um, panel here, people from different backgrounds. So I'm very excited. And if you are joining us live, then don't forget to say hi in the comments and ask our people questions. Um, I've given them permission to jump on your questions rather than what I'm saying, because it's it, again, all of these podcasts are about giving you the information you're after. So feel free to ask um, for people who are on the podcast. We'll just introduce slowly, uh, but surely people who are, are in the panel. So just going round, if you'd like to say uh, what your name is, where you are in the country and what your experience of working with runners is then that'd be great. So let's start off um, on my screen. I can see Shane, first of all. So Shane, do this, um, the favour of introducing yourself, would you? Yeah, so hi, I'm Shane Robinson, and I started life out very early as a runner, back when I was 15 years old. I'm now 33. So I've run a long time, um, and it's kind of guided my uh, sort of passions in life, my profession. So I've ended up becoming a sports massage therapist and working with runners and becoming a, a running coach. Uh, I'm involved in park run. I've worked in a running shop, so I like to feel like I've covered a lot of facets of, of the industry. So it's a brief bit about me and uh, my business at the minute is currently Active Edge Sports Therapy, and that's what I'm trying to build um, up in Lincoln to hopefully help as many runners and many people as I can up in Lincoln. Fantastic. That was so condensed. You've done this elevator pitch before. <laughs> very professional. You did forget to, to tell everybody and very modest that you're at, uh, what, what's your what's your 10K at the moment? Uh, so my 10K best is is around 30 minutes. Um, there we go. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. important. That's what our listeners are really thinking. And you're probably the only person who will reveal their 10K time on the panel tonight. So it's good that one of the section. <laughs> so that's great. No, great. Thanks for joining us, Shane. So, yeah, we'll make sure that all links to websites for each of our panel and ways to get in contact with them will be in the show notes. But, yeah, that's director of Active Edge Sports Therapy, Shane Robinson, in the panel. Moving across, um, again, uh, no particular order, but Hannah, Hannah Tabram, would you be so kind to introduce yourself? Hello. Hi, so I'm Hannah Tabram. I'm a sports massage therapist in Norfolk. 
Um, I trained to do sports massage because I started running um, fairly late on, sort of in my kind of mid to late 30s. I'm not telling you what year it was, how old I was. Um, but I started running for my mental health and I decided I wanted to do something that would help people to keep moving themselves because of the benefits. Um, and then since then, I have got very into Canny Cross, which is running with dogs, um, running attached to dogs. So that is a sport in its own right. It's a bit of a niche sport and it's also a sport that has its own particular challenges, I think, and injury things. So, yeah, I will be talking about that a little bit. Well, Woody, if, if the technical language uh, tonight is, yes, is, is, absolutely. Is, is too much for you, then there will be a glossary at the end uh, for some of the words we're using. But that's really cool, Hannah. I'm so pleased that you're here because I think runners with dogs is something that can shock therapists when they do walk through the door because yeah. your just mind is slightly blown and it's a yeah. great example of where everything you thought about what a runner should maybe be doing is totally out of the water which is what Absolutely. we should do all the time with individuals so but also i think depending on where you are in the world it's probably a, a market and an area of runners which are a little bit untapped and if you do start working with these people there's there's an awful lot of you on there and you're all kind of in yeah trouble. there are there are and there are more and more of us and definitely i've had clients who said they've been to sort of therapists who haven't really understood what canny cross is or what they're doing so it is a useful thing to know about it's definitely it's an eye-opener so that's really exciting thanks so much for joining us right let's move um, on my screen to bottom left first row um penny tell us about yourself uh hi i'm um, a sports massage therapist and a soft tissue therapist and i just literally started my running uh journey in 2018 so i'm a kind of like a late runner but I got really obsessed with it. Like I joined a club and I run quite a lot and league races and all of that. And then kind of like increase the um, distance of running up to a half marathon. And I don't dare do a full. I just, I'm just there. That's the maximum amount of, uh, of distance I want to cover because I have a lot of clients coming in that do ultra running and they have so many injuries. I just, um, I wouldn't want that for myself. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Ideally, we want to help all runners out there, but there's so many variables that we have to consider. That's great. Very powerful closing statement. So true. Fantastic. So yeah, again, we'll put uh, your links, Penny. Thank you very much at the end in the show notes. So that's Penny DeMoss from Soma Sports Massage Therapy, and we'll give the website links and all that at the end. Thank you very much. Let's move across to Chris Kitson. Hello. Yeah, so uh, my name is Chris, obviously Chris Kitson. Uh, so my business is Rockstar Runners. Um, so I guess like, I got into running a little bit. So I'm based up in Leeds. Um, I actually got into running through my clients. Um, and it was actually, they basically inspired me to, to give it a go. Um, and they kind of moved on into triathlon. Um, and then, yeah, since I've kind of niched back down into running a little bit more, um, work pretty much exclusively with runners now um, as a sports therapist, uh, do a little bit of coaching as well alongside that. So they work really well together. Um, and yeah, currently kind of on, on the way from Manchester Marathon myself in a couple of weeks time, um and yeah moving towards another kind of ultra marathon later on in the year that's me good luck Fantastic. yeah <laughs> good to hear you good to hear. again the listeners are like oh one of us this will listen to this one <laughs> definitely so he's doing a race and everything and rockstars once is looking amazing chris obviously we've known each other a long time and you've spoken at therapy expo you've been a guest on the show back in where we were in just in double figures in 19 and 22 not 1922 in episode 19 and episode 22 so it's really been exciting and fun to join you on your journey and yeah if you haven't checked out rockstar runners yet um then make sure you do um amazing new website chris is a new but the website is relatively new it's been a bit of a nightmare is it chris or glad to finally have it all together oh yeah absolutely it's been <laughs> like a lot of people as it so it was a long time coming <laughs> but we finally got it over the line <laughs> now it's looking wicked and 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 as always on the STA podcast, we're looking at all aspects of business and website hosting came up in social media again today. Somebody asked a question about that and having a website. Do you need a website? What should my website give? But yeah, if you want like a an example of one be for everybody's needs, but it's it's got bells and whistles and more. So yeah, check out Rockstars Runners. Uh Rockstarrunners.com. Come, come, come. Right, fantastic. <laughs> um and Sarah, Sarah Clatworthy, last but not least, Sarah, tell us about yourself. Hi, yeah, um, I'm a sports massage therapist also. Um, I'm, I qualified 11 years ago. And that was mainly because I started running as well. So there's, there's some echoes that I hear around this panel that are true for me also. Um, so once I started getting injured, 
I was really interested in why and what was going on. So I got into uh, massage at, at level three and worked up. And then since then, I've just been trying to add uh, to my experience and what I can offer my clients, um, doing lots of different types of courses. Like I've just done uh, a very own max uh, gait analysis for runners uh, recently, which was um, brilliant, very helpful. Started um, using that a lot now with the runners that I, I see. Um, but also anything that would help uh, uh, me look after my clients um, at a deeper level. So uh, kinesiology taping, neurological testing, um, and uh, some some things I've done for fun, which was uh, a big be, uh, beginner's course for, uh, in sonography, <laughs> just because I was interested and a bit of a geek. I wanted to get as much information as possible out of that. So, but yeah, most most of my clients I see probably about sixty percent of them are runners. So, I'll be learning from some of these guys tonight as well. Amazing. Thank you so much. And what part of the country do you say you're in, Sarah? Uh, Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire, brilliant. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, again, just before we crack into what I know is going to be so much valuable information tonight. Um, another reason for the SDA podcast is obviously to help networking and you get to know each other. So if one of our speakers is in the same neck of the woods as you, then it might be a chance to kind of reach out, and maybe even meet up depending on whether that's in your interest or not. But it's just a case of sharing information, which is what we kind of do since COVID. So do pay attention to where, well, first of all, just pay attention. And second, pay attention <laughs> to where these people are, because they might be just down the road from you. It's incredible. Sometimes speakers on this on Ask Us Anything realize, I'm just down the road from you. We've never met. So, so it's great. We've got a nice representation from around England. No one from Scotland is there. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for that, aren't I? <laughs> All right, sorry, Stevie. Nice sorry, Leslie, but yeah, but we are covering the, the, the England at least pretty well. Um, right, okay, we're gonna crack into it. Thanks everyone who's joining us. We've got a nice um, load of people in the live land. So thank you very much and let questions come through as and when they cross your mind, people. But we're gonna jump into what the topic for tonight, therapy for runners. Um, how do we start this off? off? The first thing I'm really interested in is all of you guys run. Okay, you all run us. OK, so I, I remember when I was quite well in my career, I remember more than one therapist saying to me, Matt, don't I know you run, but make sure you see other runners because it's going to be seasonal. You're going to suffer if you only work with runners, Matt. And I was like, but I need light runners. I only identify with runners. I don't understand swimmers. I don't understand anyone who chases the ball. Forget that. I've got no empathy with anybody who chases after the ball or even works in a team. What's that all about? Ridiculous. Where people can let you down or you can let others down. Don't want to know. And I think that's quite common with runners. It's just you, the road or the terrain, wherever you are, and it's up to you to do what you want to do in a string relay or something, or unless you've got a dog. Um, but yeah, it's, do you think it really, we're all biased because we are runners, but do you think it helps being a runner if you're going to really work in that target market? Anybody, you can start definitely, in any order. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, 100%. I, I think yeah. you just said it, Matt. I think you need to understand the runner. Yeah. So I think being a runner helps you do that um and when i before i got into therapy when i you know i had no idea i was going to go down this route and I, th I think um one of you also said it earlier it frustrated me when people didn't understand that if i was telling them i was running 70 miles a week and the, only, the response i got was oh well, that's too much I, I kind of didn't really resonate with me uh, yeah. so i think it helps to understand the runner but on the same basis just being a runner doesn't necessarily help because runners are who we are treating so it's not helping them <laughs> so it, i think it's finding that balance and making sure you understand who you're treating yeah my opinion that's so it, cool i just want to resonate that for because be, being a runner really helps but being a runner isn't enough i think that's such a cool thing yeah. i just needed to repeat that that's great <laughs> definitely like the conversations isn't it obviously if you've got someone in clinic and you can have those similar conversations you can talk about you know the common races that they might do and the types of sessions that they're doing and and just have that kind of common terminology is is super important i think and it, it can really help in terms of a connection with with someone which obviously we know the importance of in in general uh within getting that kind of therapeutic clients there as well mm. I think it helps with things like if you're having to have a conversation and say, well, actually, maybe you do need to step it back for a week or two and then build it back up. If you can say, I understand that's not an easy thing to do and I wouldn't ask you to do it as a runner. I wouldn't ask you to do that. I'm yeah. telling you this because it's for the best. I think people sometimes think, you know, running is really important to them and they don't necessarily understand that you understand that, if that makes sense. They want 
you can empathize with them and say, I know it's not an easy thing to do, but in the long term, it will do you good. And that is why I'm asking you to do it, not just for the sake of it. Yeah, I, I always say that runners are a different breed. Yeah. We are a different breed and we need yeah. someone to understand us sort of communicate. Yeah. Why do you think really is, what sets running apart? Why, if, is it just our bias or is there something different about the activity of running? Uh, it's just because we're great. <laughs> 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 which is brilliant i was going to say because we're idiots but um, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> i think there's a whole really, mix of us out yeah. there yeah i saw a really great thing on social media that somebody had posted like saying when you tell people if you can do this activity if it's not above a three out of ten on the pain score don't say that to runners because they'll underscore themselves give them something it was like tell them it can be mild tolerable pain that doesn't change your gait don't give them a number because they'll be like of course it's a three it's like your legs hanging off it's not a three <laughs> you know and yeah. i think that's something in that. yeah, i think uh, i think with runners and the u uniqueness of us is um i mean it's a whole body sport it's if you go for a one hour run like the the loading of that is quite high and it yeah. even though it's different it's borderline more than you know deadlifting 200k um so i think like that's also why a lot of us get injured um so i think runners experience a lot of injuries hence why we're all in business and um <laughs> so i think you learn a lot and you know coming full circle back to being a runner it helps you know if you've had a shoulder injury it helps when you treat a shoulder injury um if you've had a knee injury yeah. and it's a running knee injury and you're a runner i think it, it resonates all around yeah. and yeah the longer you spend running the more injuries you'll pick up and i think that's just part and parcel i think that's what kind of makes us unique because we're not getting sly tackled or you know we're not jumping into people and well it's not meant to be non-contact it's all self-inflicted yeah <laughs> candy cross is a bit different i think <laughs> that's even more self-inflicted <laughs> yeah so i think like the uniqueness of it and then a lot of sports even team sport running still forms the basis of them mm. um but i might just be biased so <laughs> i'm interested then because i'm keen for this if there, there if there are therapists out there who realize there's a lot of runners around them that there's running clubs and there's like local maybe halves park runs marathons thinking wow there's people that i can really help and i really want to do you think that what do you think would help them get these runners in should they be maybe should do they need to have a certain level of running themselves or do they have to start going down to local events or how if they haven't already got these runners coming to them what are some tips to try and get these runners coming through their door start coaching and you can get them injured yourself <laughs> mend them then mend them Clever. Yeah. As a massage therapist, I started out going to local or races that were organised by uh, the club that I'm affiliated with. Um, so you were visible for a start and people would, uh, you, they would get around from word of mouth as well. Um, so the, the, the club races were a good place to start. Mm. I think thinking about online as well, like on my website, I have a blog, which I haven't updated for ages, but it's there. And there are a couple of bits about, you know, should I have a massage after I've done a marathon? Will it help this? You know, what's a pre and post race massage about? And every year and around this time of year, when I look at the clicks on my website, people start to click on those articles again because it's marathon season. And that kind of thing just helps. It helps to pull traffic towards your website if you've got that sort of stuff on there. Yeah, you need to be involved in one way or another, don't you? you know, I think with runners, because running is such a social thing. I'm not a social runner at all. You know, the idea of saying to somebody, do you fancy going out for a run? It's just, for me, it makes me feel a bit sick thinking about it. For me, running is being by myself with the elements, being on the elements, lovely, me against the rain, the sun, the wind, love it. But the idea of expecting to talk to someone next to me whilst I'm having this out-of-body experience is just not for me. But... That in my career has caused problems because I think a lot of runners do it for the social reasons and the mixing, and they're more likely to go and see someone who is a friend of a friend whose face they know. I think they're quite, is that, have you had that experience or do you think that is the case with runners definitely. in particular? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think uh, word, of, word of mouth definitely helps. Um, but I, again, going back to runners being a unique breed and, and actually as being runners, um, I think we, 
as a runner myself, like the therapists I've gotten with the past, so that the ones that actually have also been able to be social with, uh, you know, as Chris mentioned, talk about my races, people who you share interests with. If, if you as a therapist shares interest with these people, they're going to like you. They're going to recommend their friends to you because their friends, by definition, will share the same values as them and then they'll, they'll come and follow us. So I think it's probably a very organic thing. Um, I think like, uh yeah going to events and obviously handing out flyers like that's the environment you want to work in anyway so i think that naturally builds and actually helps um just to play devil's, devil's advocate a little bit um i'm quite honest with what i think of sports massage as a sports massage therapist and the narrative that's around it and that might lose me business at times so I, I, it's finding the right balance with all of this stuff and i think and yeah, word of mouth is probably the, the best if you're able to get your your values out, I guess, in business and in as a therapist. Just my opinion. I think there's a lot of like obviously a lot of runners there, their big fear seems to be anyway, is obviously if just going to a therapist and instantly being told that they can't run anymore. So and obviously having that and having people have that experience with you and like that like that gets talked on quite early on in my sessions generally with yeah. people so i've just met them it's just like you know i i hear a lot of people and and this and like obviously the, the last thing we want is to stop you running so let's have a you know a good solid assessment so that we can really make some some informed decisions on that um but I, I'm, I'm always kind of like i'm kind of the guy that like if i can keep you running like i will keep you running and straight away they just like that that mm -hmm. guy just drops and then they're like, right, okay, let's do this together. And, and we mm. go from there, basically. Very cool. Very good. I'd say, Mike, if, you, if you're a runner, there's a kind of like a given empathy formed in the session. Where as soon as you come, you have a runner come in your clinic. Mm. They know you're a runner. That it kind of like creates that empathy straight away. You don't even have mm. to work too hard for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you think connected with that, I'm, I'm thinking I've seen with other maybe less experienced therapists that they're worried that because they're not as fast as the other runners who they want to treat, they're a bit worried about going down to the local park run because they're thinking who's going to mm -hmm. ask, you know, who's going to come and see me if they know that I'm doing like a 35, 45, a 40 minute, you know, 5k or something. So is that something you've either experienced yourself or still experience a little bit? And if so, have you got any tips for helping people get over that? I mean, I'm quite a mediocre runner. I will like, quite <laughs> cheerfully say that I am happily mediocre. Well, I wish I could it say I was mediocre still. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't seem to put people off. I think that, you know, people just like the fact that you are a runner and you understand how important it is to them. Mm. Um, were, you, were you nervous at first? Or, I mean, you belong to, your main activity is canicross, isn't it? Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it, I think it's just nerve wracking just sort of going to a new club and meeting new mm. people. But exactly. I was always, I've always been quite open that, you know, the reason that I came into this job was because of my running background and I'm not the fastest. And uh, a lot of my social media, if I put something on um, about my running, it's like, no, I'm not very fast, but I really love it. And I want you to carry on loving it as well. So come and see it's me great. and, Beautiful. you know, we'll try and sort this out. And I tend to go on that, not on, I'll make you the fastest person around because I can't massage you into being any faster anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but very much, you know, I'll try and keep you going as much as we can. I, I think that's that's brilliant because that shows like the passion and when I started out I was actually concerned of the opposite that uh, I suppose locally I'm you know one of the quicker runners and I was known for that and I didn't want to almost uh, become elitist with it and people not think they can see me because they're not fast yeah. and but actually I mean I learned this when I worked in running retail is you know before i got into any sort of profession with running you, i just assume most people are like me and then i started working in a running shop and i realized no i'm actually the minority i think you go down to a park run and they are the busiest from a lot of them from 25 minutes through to 40 50 minutes so i think actually if you're you don't i think if you're not fast you probably actually relate with most runners and then also um people like me we get injured less typically because our training we've trained smart from a young age well hopefully we have anyway and actually the more training you do and the more balanced your training is and your training intensity distribution the less you need treatments i think then you go into well i just need a massage just because i like them uh, and they make me feel better but i think yeah if, if you're if you're a passionate therapist 
and a passionate runner as well. It doesn't matter what level you are, you're going to resonate with everybody else who's passionate. And I think yeah, that's what's going to stick with you. And they, they know it's within your best interest as a therapist to get them better, is to ironically not get them through your door. And as a result, they'll probably bring you more business, I think, as well. I think, like, I was thinking back to sort of like the start of it, I guess, when I got into it, like when I wasn't into running or triathlon or anything at that point. Um, and actually the draw for me was like, I was just showing just genuine interest and I was just like really asking them questions. I was just sat there fascinated by it all. And I was just like, this is amazing that you can do this. And, you know, and like that, they, they love that obviously. And just kind of like having that, you know, someone go like, you know, I think you're ace. Like, I think you're amazing. Like, I can't believe you can do this. Like no one doesn't like to hear that, do they really? So no. like, that's on, on the side of you, if you're not, you know, into the sport yourself, I think it's not to say, oh, okay, you know, you shouldn't be working with runners or anything. Cause actually, you know, it's just, again, it's that same as anything, isn't it? It's just showing that genuine interest in, in someone asking questions and just learning about them really. Brilliant. Do you, do you think Chris, sorry, I'm going to ask you a question now. Um, do you think that feeds back into like, understanding runners and comes back to actually if you're not a runner does that mean you doesn't mean you can't like treat runners yeah exactly this is it because if you like say if you're not a runner even so if you if you're just showing that genuine interest and like you you know they they perceive that okay this person really wants to hear about this and they want to learn and you can show them you know and ask them like what resources have you got for me you know how can you help me better understand what you're doing like that in itself, like that's huge, isn't it? Like I've treated people Definitely, obviously like yeah. a lot of different sports and I, I don't understand the sport. So I have to actively ask and say, I'm really sorry, but I don't know much about this. Like, could you, you know, direct yeah. some but, best yeah, resources? Yeah. Cool, isn't it? Like, again, people, you showing that genuine interest and actually like, you know, this is going over and above and I'm going to do this job well and let's work and, and do it together. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Great tips, great stuff coming out. So, so we've covered the fact that it does help if you're a runner, but maybe more importantly, you don't have to be um, a fantastically fast runner. Don't be embarrassed about your time. It's more a case of just showing up and showing people that you care, that you want to help. If anything, even if you are, you know, slower and you're still there, that shows a certain kind of part of your character. Show, yeah, I'm slower. So what? It's not all about that. It's about me being here. I really want to help you guys. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's all part of a team. So it's great. And I love the, the, the fact that. It's really, uh, hopefully it's inspiring to listeners that Shane had the opposite, where it was like, oh, I'm going to be too fast. People can think I'm elite. People can think I'm yeah. So even somebody who's like doing that sort of, those sort of speeds is still going to have imposter syndrome or some kind of like, oh, I shouldn't be here. No one's going to want to know me sort of thing. So it's great. It works from both ends. Um, so yeah, interesting. Let's move on maybe to common injuries. Is there such a thing as the most common injuries in running? Um, in your experience, um, or do you get to see all sorts of different things in clinic? Anybody? I mean, I did a straw poll. This is a canny cross straw poll of my um, club uh, before I came on tonight, and it was all about ankles. There's just ankles being sprained left, right, and centre. Um, and I think that's just, yeah, you're running at speed over terrain, and it's it's going to happen. be really interested like, if that's really common for just trail running generally, because I tend to sort mm. of focus a lot of my running clients are canny crossers. Um, I suspect for trail running, it's probably similar, but it's not something that I would want to say with any certainty. That's really interesting. That's going to open up a little chat now mm. about right, there's running and then there's yeah. trail running, there's canny cross, there's, there's different distances, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's track there's running, feet. there's all sorts of yeah. different environments, yeah. which you need to know if you're yeah. working with your patients. So mm. let's, let's, let's do, if you don't mind, I'll flip it on its head and, do kind of cross after trail running because I think mm. that's basically trail running with a with a dog putting you along. So <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> which adds yeah, to basically. Me. Yeah, <laughs> so let's go trail running first of all. Who out of you guys who particularly works with trail runners or done trail running yourself? And if so, what sort of injuries do you think are more prevalent? Um, yeah, I've I've seen quite a few trail runners and and orienteer or bleh, orienteers actually. Uh, all right, so apart from the injuries where they're running into trees, uh, <laughs> I think it is it is mostly ankles, knees. Yeah. I also don't know whether with trail runners there's a bit more of a culture of uh, just running and using your running as training, so whether some yes. of them are slightly less robust because they won't do as much strength work or any stuff outside of it. Again, if trail running is associated with ultra running, 
there's a there's a big component on a lot of people like going quite slow relatively so they might not do as much speed work either so i think that feeds into it but actually i i think from just off the top of my head i've not quite done the extensive research but i think an ankles shin pain usually um obviously the loading mechanics are completely different when you're on a trail one i think that's a good thing and i'd recommend everybody does some trail running but um yeah i think because you can't you can't control as much either um, yeah. And from year to year, it can be different. We've had so much rain this year. Like, that's by definition going to mean that this winter will be different loading patterns to last winter. Um, so as a runner, you can't always just think, well, I did that last year, so this mm. should be fine. Yeah. So we're all in agreement then that most of the trail runners and, and our interiors and that who we see, it's, it's more ankles than knees then? Is that safe to say? And is that because of terrain then? Is that because of the fact that you're having to... Eva and invert and yeah. all that more. I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. So, um, yeah, or, or maybe as well. Part of it again, people tend to like it's almost like a uh, it's like it was almost a rite of passage that people finish on the roads and then go into trails. Mm -hmm. So, is it because yeah. the body's been conditioned with impacts on hard surfaces where you get energy mm -hmm. return, and then you're going mm -hmm. soft, uneven surfaces with no energy return? So, yeah, it might be something to do with that as well, perhaps. And I think sometimes people don't realise how different it is. Like I had someone come to see me the other day who's training to do a trail half marathon. I was like, well, where are you doing your training? He's like, well, mostly I'm running on the road. I was like, you need to get off the road. You mm -hmm. need to train on the surface mm -hmm. that you're going to be running on, especially because a lot of it's on the beach. I was like, dude, you need to get onto the onto some <laughs> sand. You can't train on the road and then run on a beach. You know, your legs will fall off. And I think that sometimes people don't realise how much of a difference that is going to make until mm -hmm. something starts to complain that's really cool so yeah specificity getting somebody to especially if they're going in for a, a race or something getting training on what they're going to be training the same kind of if it's undulating you need to be doing more heels and stuff if it's flat then yeah. you know you can probably stay off the heels for the moment unless it's early on so in that case i'm going to draw upon your expertise now to think one what could trail runners be doing to reduce the risk of injury which is tricky and then afterwards we'll go what are some of your go-to's for somebody is coming in with um, ankle related pain in order to rehab them properly and fully to be able to go out and do what they're going. So let's, let's start with the reducing the risk of injury for trail runners. Is there things they should be doing more than a flat road runner sort of thing? I, I think, um, it's all, it sounds counterintuitive, but I think going back into actually what, a, an elite athlete might do, uh, running drills, movement drills, low level plyometric stuff, um, obviously not overemphasizing on it if they're not needing to build really elastic tendons etc uh, because of of the loading on there but i think not many runners do anything else other than run um so any any more ankle work i think is great um any i i love prescribing stuff that people can do like around the house like tiptoe walking and, and duck walks and stuff like that um just to get the ankles moving more um and also uh i suppose this underpins all injuries but actually controlling the the training load a little bit if they got injured because yeah. of everything on trails well actually get back and do a bit more on the road again if you're doing everything on the road actually you need to do some trail running this specificity as you, as you mentioned so i think they're the two things i usually work on um looking at actually what is their running distribution in terms of the surfaces and then just throwing in some easy drill work that you might see a track athlete do go into a bit more detail you mentioned a couple of exercises then um, just different ways of walking in that um, in order to strengthen those ankles so what were some of your uh, people will be sitting there now with their pens going <laughs> <laughs> walking, walking on your tiptoes Lovely, is one of my yeah uh, really burns your calves and um, well, i call them duck walks but walking on your heels so mm -hmm. you know basically going into full dorsiflexion really mm. again aches your shins and then from that i typically progress into things like uh, pogo jumps which are basically just sort of springing up using your feet keeping nice straight legs now i'm a big big fan of those three and me personally not saying there's a way you should do anything but i think the, the attention span of us, us runners isn't great as soon as you've told them they can do some running that's it they're off of the fairies <laughs> try to keep like no more than three things brilliant to try and improve adherence and again those are specific because they're a bit more fun. They're a bit more easy, I think, to integrate than 
finding a step and spending 10 minutes doing calf raises but that's just my opinion again yeah. that's really cool. skipping skipping's i love skipping it's yeah. great and hops yeah yeah i feel like i need to take notes i sprained my ankle in january that's a really important point actually and, and i've seen chris kind of chris if i mean all of you are amazing i just uh, chris has just got some great graphics out there but chris i've seen you harping on quite a lot about how like don't give you under too many exercises and things because it's just exactly what shane said here you know we have to remember that our runners just want to get out so just getting to do three exercises will be tricky enough so is there any go-to favorites for you chris if you're thinking like three exercises to get them to be a little bit more plyometric a little bit more yeah i guess i mean obviously off the back watch here, as i've been saying there like and just thinking i guess if it's trail as well thinking um a little bit in terms of like multi-directional work as well so i say cool. if you're mm -hmm. not just thinking right okay you're sagittal playing all the time as well thinking right okay can i give like some lateral pogos and start challenging that a little bit more um playing around with like different depths as well so thinking about right okay not just like shallow pogos but can i get a little bit more height in here can we look at stuff like <laughs> later on again but things like depth jumps and you know like some of those bigger impacts like if you think in terms of like trails and ultras and stuff we have to think right okay you've got the running sections but then you've also got things where you might be going over styles where you're having to actually do some pretty big bigger drops off the top of the walls and things like that mm -hmm. but again that comes with obviously the understanding of the sport and and thinking about that and actually what are they going to encounter and therefore what forces we have to deal with um that sort of stuff can be really important and guess again depending on where they're at within their within their training um if for instance someone's a little bit more 